provide an exemption to the 2% cap on the local transaction and use taxes to allow TAM to consider pursuit of a new sales tax measure for transportation. Um, despite a persuasive a presentation to our City Council. It's apparent that the proposal has not yet received the vigorous vetting, vetting that our uh, community expects and deserves. Um, TAM has changed uh, the way that they're going about it and I think our community needs to weigh in um, and get involved in the implementation plan and the transportation funding. Um, asking our families to part with more of their hard-earned um, paychecks comes with the responsibility of providing a real justified um, and thoughtful understanding for how the money is going to be spent for the benefit of our cities and our counties. Um, I, it doesn't appear to me at this point, given the fact that TAM has changed when they came to us with an urgency item and then they've changed it completely right afterwards, I don't feel that TAM has met its obligation to our community and for that and given a proper explanation. And for that, um, I would like the council to um, bring this forward in another agenda item. Um, given our agenda, I don't think that could happen until February the 28th, um, but I'd like to uh, rescind our support and bring it back to council at that time. Um, because of the way we're doing this, it's a proposed agenda item. Um, so I need to have um, three other council members agree to bring this forward um, to a future agenda. And with that, I'm going to go to um, council member Lucan. Uh, yeah, just, just a question for clarification. The, the action that we took was to send a, a letter that uh, basically showed what was the, the feelings of the council at that time. Uh, my understanding is a letter has not been sent yet. Is that correct? No. So, I mean, one, I mean, there's a couple different ways that we can do this, but it, we could do a full, you know, resend if that's the will of the council or potentially direct staff to hold off on sending a letter. When it comes back to us, is there a whole host of ways that we could discuss this or is it one option or the other? I, I've I think if the council so wishes and you have three members in support, we can bring it back as as broadly as you want. You only took one action, and the action that you took, um, though I had trouble getting this to play today, um, was to um, send a letter of support. That was the action. The letter hasn't gone yet, as, according to the city clerk. So ultimately, if you bring it back and you don't do anything, then the letter of support would go. If you bring it back and uh, modify what your previous decision was, then the modification would be what would happen. So I, I think if you bring it back, you have a, a series of options in front of you um, at that point in time. But that would be discussed at that at, point. It would be discussed at that time. Yes, correct. All right, so my other things are, are comments. I'll, I'll wait until we questions okay. in public. Um, I'm gonna go to Mayor Pro Tem Friday. Uh, I would be in support of agendizing that as an item. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Pam Drew. Um, it seems to me that it's moot at this point. Um, and since it's moot, I would not be in support of um, revisiting it. And I, I believe it would be a reconsideration rather than a, a rescission uh, because this is two weeks after uh, the meeting. There was a subsequent meeting and then this is the second subsequent meeting. Um, can I go to the um, city attorney for clarification? So to the extent that a council member requests reconsideration, your council policy manual does uh, provide that reconsideration of an item shall be brought up at the meeting um, at which the action is taken or a meeting subsequent, immediately succeeding. Uh, the meeting where the action was taken. But to rescind an action previously taken, the council can take that action at any time. Um, so just like if you adopt a resolution and you decide to rescind that resolution or you introduce or adopt an ordinance and you decide to rescind that ordinance, provided you put it on the agenda, you can take that action at any time. Okay. okay. Um, council Member Eklund. Uh, yes, I, it's my understanding too that um, this issue really is mute because TAM is not going to be going forward getting support from other cities because Senator McGuire, I think everybody's read the paper, has um, articulated that he believes that there needs to be more discussion um, about specific 
projects and, and that needs to be really brought forward. So um, it, it's my understanding that TAM has changed their approach. I met with the chair of the Transportation Authority, Marin, yesterday and had a long discussion with her about um, the approach that TAM has taken. And I think she's heard loud and clear that uh, TAM needs to regroup. And, um, and so it's my understanding that the issue is moot and that their TAM is going to go back and propose a different approach, which would then be discussed at the TAM meeting, which we all can um, have some more input into. Um, as the person who brought this forward, um, I think we have an outstanding um, item out there that says that there's a support. Um, regardless, and actually our agenda, my agenda item went in before the paper um, with Senator McGuire and also the TAM letter. Um, we right now are showing support, um, I think because TAM, I feel, has misled us. Um, I don't want that item outstanding. Um, I think it should be rescinded, and that will be for the council to decide if we can bring this forward in a few weeks. But um, that is the reason why I've brought it forward. Um, Excuse me, but um, you know, I, I'd be glad to support the effort, but I just want to make clear, TAM did not mislead us. It was very clear what they were pursuing, um, and it was a conscious decision of this council. And if you watch the video, it's very clear that our action was to support the effort on a 3-2 vote. Um, so, um, but if, uh, you know, rescinding the support uh, and clarifying that we're doing this only because TAM has now taken a different approach and we want to make sure that we're not on record, I, I agree that there's no problem for us to do that. But just want to make clear that TAM did not mislead us because um, it was it was very clear um, in the motion that was made as well as in the presentation. All right. Um, with that, I'm going to go to our public um, and uh, public comment on this. And if anyone is going to speak to this, if you could please hand your cards in to the city clerk. Um, the card I have is for Al Dugan. Yeah. Um, after listening to you talk about how many meetings you were going to have a month and it took the time it took, this item we're talking about right now is supposed to be talked about at 725. Mm -hmm. So I think you might need eight meetings a month. <laughs> so, but with that said, um, very simply, you're coming back now because Tam left you holding the bag. Very simply, everybody else, every other city council that was going to look at this immediately started to say, and we're looking at it the same way San Rafael was looking at it. And so quite frankly, you guys were going to be left holding the bag out here. And I think you very consciously decided what you were going to do at that meeting on January 24th. I know I sent you emails that clearly outlined what you were doing what you, what Tam was trying to get you to do. So I, I, I find it disturbing that you that it's being mischaracterized as misunderstanding because I don't think it was misunderstood at all. So, you know, the bottom line is you guys did this. This is going to be something that sticks to you. The videos there, all three of you consciously voted to approve and endorse raising the sales cap, sales tax cap. So I'll close with that and uh, thank you. Okay, and with that, is there anybody else who wishes to speak? Thank you. Um, I'm going to call uh, Jerry Peters. This yes. Yeah. Hi, Jerry. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, yes, I have just a couple of comments. I, I certainly support that you uh, uh, re relook and uh, withdraw that letter going to TAM. I think this the TAM's action, although I am uh, appreciative of being in the transportation business for many years, now on the outside looking in, but our transportation um, 
particularly highways and rail and, and uh, bus service in the county is very lacking. It's very underfunded, and this has been uh, a failure of, the, of the, um, the, our state government. The problem is that users should be paying for what they use. We don't do that. California has not done that in decades. And it's time that, that TAM steps back and the, the uh, state legislature and the governor step forward and start making this a reasonable operation. Appreciate your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and I believe Susan Wernick. Um, I just wanted to point out that um, I don't think it's a bad thing if a council member switches gears on, on an item. And I, honestly, I have to tip my hat to the mayor for bringing this forward. Um, I, I was not necessarily in favor of this. Um, I didn't follow the issue in, incredibly closely, but nobody likes their taxes to go up. Um, but you know what? I think sometimes it does. It takes a lot of courage to come forward and say it's time. You know what? Hmm, maybe we didn't do this right. So I'm thinking, if you do rescind it, it's a matter of public record that the council had the foresight or the the courage to um, take a look at it again. Um, I, you know, I'm glad Tam is relooking at this. They should have done that to begin with. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I think the council members that supported it did it in their, you know, with the best interests of the community um, in mind. I sat down with the mayor and talked about it at length. Um, we did not necessarily agree, but I did understand how she came to her position on this. And I would imagine that the two other council members that supported it um, had some similar uh, thought process. So, um, you know, I. I I just think it does take courage and leadership to sometimes say, wait a minute, <laughs> we didn't do that right. So I appreciate what you're doing, and I would support um, the council rescinding it, the decision. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, anybody else wishing to address the council on this item? Um, Tina McMullen. I was here when you originally discussed this item, and I think what distressed me the most was there was clearly not enough time and not enough information to vote for it. And, and it's getting harder and harder for me to believe that there isn't a specific voting block of three people who persist in, in colluding together on decisions that are not in the best interest of the city. I absolutely believe we need a conversation during the time it took the council to work on other issues, I went to TAM's website, I downloaded the reports, I looked at the statistics. Pretty much every question that council member uh, Friday asked and council member Lucan raised that TAM didn't answer was on that website. Mm -hmm. And then later, I'm sure you've all seen the articles in the Marin IJ, just trying to make the point that Sometimes, if you don't take the time before you attend a council meeting to read the information that the folks that are attending the meetings read, you're going to make mistakes. And it does take courage to change a mistake. But there's something else that goes on, and, and maybe it's because I've only lived in Nevada 35 years and I wasn't raised in Marin, and my parents never served on a city council because we were a military family. But when I comment at council meetings, I do so with statistics in hand from reports issued by public agencies in question. And it seems to make little difference to the three of the five council members who, who appear to treat my comments as if they're fabricated. If I make a mistake, I'm going to own up that it's never my intention to mislead. Um, I feel like there's two classes of Nevada residents, the ones that get heard because they already serve on commissions, and they cater to the status quo by telling the council members what they want to hear. And then there are those of us asking the council to think outside of the box by questioning the use of local tax dollars, by asking for a more thoughtful and deliberative process, and by sometimes standing up and saying no, even when you may not want to hear it. If you refuse to listen to our voices now, it won't make the issues disappear, but it will make it harder and harder to convince folks in the future that when you say inclusive, you mean you, you really mean it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else wishing to speak to this item? Mr. Turner? And if I'll just add this to your card. 
Oh, what? Yeah, you can do that. Uh, council members, I think what happened is a prime example of what I spoke to before, of things being scheduled on a Thursday. I happen to have been involved in this for months ahead of time. There was no secret about this. Mm -hmm. This was a calculated move by TAM to put the bums rush on city councils. It was tied to Senator McGuire very definitely, despite denials by his office, which he later admitted were in fact you know, true. It was the case. They were related. They just didn't want to have the public know about it. So this is a, an excellent example of what happens when something like this is published on a Thursday and you're expecting the public to deal with it on a Tuesday, particularly when it's Thursday night. These reports are complicated and it makes a lot of stress and strain unnecessarily. I would have hoped the council would have said, look, there's a lot more involved in here mm -hmm. than just what appears and we should step back and reflect upon it. Now, uh, Mayor Athos, you may feel like you were misled and I could certainly see, you know, an interpretation to that uh, part. Uh, for those of us that were involved in this, particularly as a member of COST, that particular tax watch group now, we knew what was happening. We saw what was happening. And quite frankly, we were primary in stopping it. And I would suggest that if you have the time, go look at the San Rafael City Council meeting that covered that. Look at the quality of the questions that were put to Diane Stanhauser. Uh, it's just a good place to start. We can be just as good as they are, but they had great clarification from Steinhauser, great clarification, before they voted. And I watched the vote swing within the council as more information came out. So thank you very much for your contribution, but I hope that we'll avoid another episode like we recently had because it doesn't reflect well upon the city of Novato. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to speak to council? With that, I'm going to bring it back to council for action on um, whether or not to bring this item forward. Um, I, I will move. <laughs> I'll move that we move this item um, to um, hopefully February the 28th to rescind our previous support of January the 24th. Do I have a second? I would second that. So it's been moved by Mayor Athis um, and uh, seconded by uh, Mayor Pro Tem Friday. And with that, if you could call the question. We have some discussion, or oh. would you prefer we take it after? Um, I'm not sure. Are we supposed to have discussion at this point because it's an item that we're bringing forward? Or comment. But you could have discussion about the agendizing it and what you're agendizing, certainly. Okay. Is that... Would you like to make any before? Um, well, I think I've made it clear. I mean, I, I just don't want a letter of support hanging out there. Um, Tam, literally within days of um, our meeting, um, canceled their meeting with Larkspur and changed the way that they were going about it. I think the way that they um, decided to go about it is correct. Um, that's what they should have done in the first place. That isn't what we were told um, what, we, what they needed. Um, and, uh, you know, for that, that's the reason why I'm bringing this forward. And would the seconder like to speak? No, I don't have any additional comments. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go to um, uh, Council Member Lucan. Yeah, um, I, I'd be willing to support the motion, but I'm not inclined necessarily to change my vote. Uh, I have to, you know, we, we will make that decision later on. Uh, I just want to say in, in full disclosure, um, I was very aware of what I was voting on two weeks ago. Uh, this first came to the TAM board back in December, on December 1st. Uh, the decision was made at that time to bring this to our local councils. I reported that to this council on December 6th during council member comments to give the council a heads up of what was coming. Uh, and then it came uh, six, seven weeks later. Uh, all that being said, I will, I will support the motion to bring it forward because I, I'm inclined to see what we might. I do think we need to provide some direction with regards to sending a letter. To me, maybe not necessarily rescinding or changing a vote, but we will have that decision later on. Um, so I will leave it at that. I probably don't want to say too much more than that since yeah. the further discussion will be coming forward. Um, and Councilmember Eklund? 
Uh, yes, I'm going to support the motion only, be, and I'd like the minutes to reflect this, only because I do not want the city of Novato to um, be on the list of supporters for something that may or may not go forward at, at the end. Um, I'd also like to make sure the minutes reflected that I voted no on this item, and I was very clear that I felt that it was the uh, cart before the horse and that Tam was approaching this um, incorrectly. Okay. Um, Council Member um, Drew? Well, there, are, <clears throat> there are many, many issues here, and we're losing uh, lots of them. Uh, there weren't really any substantive questions that were able to be asked at the meeting. We were stuck in the double speak of uh, Tam's verbiage. Um, it gave me a feeling, uh, a very surreal feeling of being in 1984 where <laughs> war is peace and black is white and, and lies are truth. Um, that concerned me because I feel like in that one action that we undid a lot of the efforts, uh, particularly that Peggy Flynn has been outstanding in, uh, I, I think we did a lot of damage to our reputation as uh, a board that is aspiring to transparency. And if we are engaging in those behaviors simply because the, the troops have been mobilized, they've been told their talking point, the talking point is that, oh, this is not uh, about a tax cap exemption. This is about starting a community conversation. You know, if you can believe that and if you line up whenever people tell you to do that, whether you're on the board or not, you are not acting in a principled way, in my opinion. And above all else, we need people who are acting in a principled way for the good of Novato. We also have to have people who are looking not to their next career step up, not to the next bigger entity or agency, not to uh, what their, uh, uh, their, their next door neighbor told them to say. I'm, I'm sorry. I think we're, we're if if the council is going to vote to agendize this, and it sounds like you, the, there's a majority who wish to do that. I think we're we were starting to veer into talking about Correct. the item itself at this Correct. point. So there perhaps is no timeline. There's no timeline that's effective here. We don't. Excuse know. me. Excuse me, Council Member Drew. I think. Um, our city attorney is saying that we're getting, we're crossing the line a little bit and we don't want to go there. So we, we will have an opportunity if we bring this forward to have more discussion. To have this discussion at the time that the item's actually agendized. Right. Yeah. I still believe that it's a moot point. Mm -hmm. And so I will be voting mm -hmm. no on the motion. Um, Claudia, if you could uh, please call roll. Councilmember Drew? No. Councilmember Eklund? Aye. Councilmember Lucan? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Friday? Aye. Mayor Athos? Aye. So that's 4 1. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll be bringing this item forward. Um, thank you very much. And now.